Yo, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about something that uh, I get a lot of questions about. And uh, it's basically, how do I hold my winners longer? You know, uh, a lot of people are scared that it's going to reverse on them. They're going to lose their profits, uh, which is very logical. You know, um, that's a very uh, normal thing to worry about, right? You, you finally, you have a winning trade and you made some profits. And, you know, human nature would say, you know, let me take the profits I've, I've earned and, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to lose all these profits I made by by holding on to this trade. Yes, that's true. But uh, for your overall P&L at the end of the month or year or decade, you know, whatever, basically longer term over a series of trades, holding your winners will indeed uh, help you out instead of hurt you. And there's some ways to get around this fear of holding your winners. And there's some ways that you can limit your downside to holding winning trades so that you don't lose out on all your profits. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk over here uh, on the screen um, and I'll show you guys a couple ways to get around this fear and uh, how to hold your winners longer. All right, cool. So let's talk uh, a little bit, first of all, on uh, some actually technical things you can do um, to help get around the uh, fear of holding a winning trade. And then let's talk a bit about the emotional and psychological side of uh, holding your winners. So technically, there's a couple things you can do, right? Let me just make the text bigger here. So you can um, move your stop loss, right? That is the, that's what a lot of people do. That's the, the easiest way to minimize risk, right? So, for example, let's say, let's say it looks like this, and you took a buy uh, right here, and it starts going up like this, right? Now you're in profits. It broke this high, right? You've made a nice, solid gain on this move. So... <laughs> Most people would just take their winner, and let's say your stop was maybe down here. Now you have a one-to-one, -one, or maybe your stop was right here. It's like one-to-two. Whatever it is, depends on your trading system. Um, but we're just going to generalize here and just say, um, yeah, let's just say it's like a one-to-two risk award, right? So you made profits, you know, very solid trade. So most people, they would just, you know, get out right here. And that was a good trade, and then move on to another one. And that's fine. Um, but also, what a lot of people do is they'll get out of the trade maybe right here, or even right here, because they get scared. Maybe there's some choppy price action. Um, and so if you're worried, and it's not even hitting your targets, it's not even at 1 to 1 or even 1 to 2. Again, depends on your system, how you set that up. But, um, you know, people get shaken out by choppiness or just by pure emotion we're going to get into that part later just by pure emotion they just get scared they maybe are over risking they have a lot of money on the table um or maybe they've made a lot of money and they're like oh man i've made five hundred dollars i've made a thousand dollars or you know whatever it is i don't want to lose this money um that's the wrong way to think about trading eliminate the money and focus on the chart right so looking at the money um you're going to make bad decisions because how much money you made doesn't the market doesn't care right the market doesn't care much money you made on a single trade it doesn't care about any single person um, unless you have billions and billions and billions of dollars which <laughs> you know most people don't so um, yeah so it, just basically what you can do is move your stop loss to break even no risk anymore you cannot lose a single penny on the trade the worst things that have the worst thing that can happen is you are back to where you started a day ago or three days ago or a week ago whenever you took the trade and that's it you can move your stop loss to break even and then once it hits your your take profit one or take profit two level uh you know like let's say for instance let's just do this here okay so let's say Oops. So it came up here and this was your TP1, right? So you can move your stop to break even. However, you've made all these profits, right? You've made this profit. 
you you don't really want to just move it to break even. Now you can, depending on uh, you know how far you think it can go. But what you can do is move your stop loss to break even. But in order to lock in money, right? Because just moving your stop to break even, you could still make zero dollars on the trade, even though looking at it, you know it was a winning trade, and so. That's where a lot of people get tripped up, right? They have a winning trade and they think, well, if I hold on to it, I could lose all my money, right? All the money I've made. And that's very true. So, uh, you know, what you can do is combine stop loss to break even and take partial profits. So by taking partial profits, meaning, you know, you maybe have, to make this easy, a one lot, Right, you have a, you you put on a one lot trade, uh, you're up a hundred pips, or you're up a thousand dollars, and what you can do, you know, because who knows, maybe this could go up three hundred pips or five hundred pips. You don't want to miss out on that, right? You don't want to miss out on that move. And if you get in, you know, let's say you 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 panic and get out of the trade, and then you get in at a less ideal area. Well, there's going to be more risk at this point, right? There's going to be more risk if you get in here because a it's further along in the trend, and you know, uh, trends do not last forever. And so, the later you get on a trend, the more risky your your position is. Um, and also, right, like you have all this space, you know, where are you going to put your stop loss? It could come down, hit your stop, then go up higher. So if you get a good entry point, really solid entry point. You don't want to jeopardize that, right? You got in a good spot. Um, you don't want to have to do more work just because you know you got greedy and took your profits. So, so what you um, what you can do, right? Let's say you're up a hundred thousand dollars, hundred pips. Take some partial profits. Take five hundred dollars or you know uh, <clears throat> half lot off the table. So now you've made. Five hundred dollars. Your stop loss is. Let me let me do this. Your stop loss is at break even here, right? And so <clears throat> now all you can do is make money on the trade, even if it comes back down and hits your stop. Um, you you made five hundred dollars, right? Um, so <clears throat> really, it's beneficial because you don't have to do absolutely any work at this point. Now, you've done the work of getting in the position. You want to capitalize as you want to get as much money out of that work as you possibly can. If you are only trading for a one-to-one -one risk reward, um, you know, try going one to two, try going one to three, try going one to five, but make sure at that one-to-one -one or one to two, your baseline like winner takes some partial profits. Right? It doesn't even have to be half. You could take even you know most off. You could take eighty percent off. Uh, what what was that? I don't know. 80% off, right? You can only leave a small part running if if you want to. Um, for me, that is all determined by, because uh, I, I trade both technicals and fundamentals. And the fundamentals is what gives me my conviction usually. So whatever, you know, uh, whatever's happening in the world to give me my bias for a certain currency moving one direction or another, uh, that'll determine my confidence in the trade and how far I think it can go, right? And so if there's something really strong, something really I have conviction that, you know, maybe uh, the pound, j just as an example, maybe the British pound will, will be heading up for the next month or something. I think it can continue going further. Then it doesn't make sense to get out of the trade because there's a lot more upside to, to capitalize on. And so, uh, let's say it does run up, um, and you know now you're up 250 pips, right? Well, on this 150, you just made another. On this, you know, let's let's go back to this example here. You took half off. You still have half a lot running. You know, on this 150 pips, you just banked. If I can, if I'm doing this right, 750 dollars, right? On top of the original 500 dollars. Um, and then on top of the five hundred dollars you you took out, so now you're up. Um, mm, let's see if I'm doing this math right. Um, this much, right? So almost double your original profits if you just took it off here, and all you had to do was take half off, move your stop to break even. It takes two seconds, and you just made another seven hundred and fifty dollars, right? 
and you just had to watch the market. Either it came back to stop you out or it hit your you know, next take profit level or close to it and you made more money without doing absolutely anything. That's the beauty I like about swing trading. Um, I don't have to look at the screen all day. I can set my you know stop loss and everything like that and I just walk away. And, you know, whatever happens, happens pretty much. It's very, you know, it's less stressful than, in my opinion, day trading like a 30-minute chart, right? Um, you know, that's just me personally. But, um, and then, you know, let's say it keeps going. It hits your third take profit level. And you just made another 100 pips. Well, that 100 pips is, uh, and let's say you took uh some more partials off here let's say you took another half off oops let's say you take another half off um okay i don't even want to do the math basically i'm not going to try to do this uh basically you you would have made over two thousand dollars and uh which is double your original um your original profits just by uh, doing, you know, moving your stops and taking partial profits along the way, which is minimizing that stress you should have about holding your winning trades, right? So there shouldn't be any stress by doing this because you made profits, you have no risk on the trade. You know, what is there to be, what do you, what is there to be scared of, right? The only thing I could see is you being scared is you are over leveraging. You've made an insane amount of money. Um, and so, you know, even taking half off, maybe you have still a lot of money on the table. That would be nerve wracking. Or <clears throat> maybe you risked a lot of money and, um, you know, you, you want to, you don't want to, uh, how do I say this? Basically, you want to get something out of all that risk you put on, right? Maybe you put on 50% of your account. Well, you know, you don't want to leave half running and it stops you out of break even. You risked a lot of money to get this winner, if that makes sense. And so really, before we even talk about anything else, make sure your risk management's on point, right? Because otherwise, of course, you're going to have psychological problems. Of course, you're going to not be able to cut your losers because they're just so big, you just can't accept them or can't hold your winners because you made so much money in a short amount of pips, you know, that uh, you just want to take all that money and, you know, it's a big payday. It's like if I offered you a million dollars now or you know, less of a chance of 10 million, uh, you know, a month from now, most people would say, I'm taking the million dollars, like, <clears throat> I'm not going to risk leaving with nothing, you know, so that's just a, a matter of, you know, making sure your position size is right, that before anything else, pretty much in trading, make sure your position size is appropriate. So we talked about some technical things you can do, right, take partial profits, um, move your stop to break even, and then eventually, once you hit maybe your second take profit level, you can move your stop from break even to, you know, maybe let's say right here, right below here or, you know, wherever you want. Pretty much you can trail your winners as it moves up. Right. Um, and just keep on capitalizing if it moves up. It's all about probability at the end of the day. Um, no one has 100 percent win rate. So. Uh, you have to do what you can to minimize your risk, but maximize your reward, right? Because really the great traders can minimize risk. That's very easy. They're good at cutting their losses quick. They're good at position sizing. What's hard is holding the winning trades, right? What turns a, a good trader to a great trader usually um, is holding their winners longer. And so if you can, if you can uh, get a hold of this quicker, I think you'll see a lot better results in your trading um, because your winners will be greater than your losses. And that alone will reduce your stress of taking trades, uh, of taking losses because, you know, you know, I take this loss. But, hey, next trade, if I have a good winner, it's going to more than make up for it. So, you know, or even if I take a loss next time, if I have a winner after that, it'll make up for it. So, you know, there's no there shouldn't be too much stress uh, involved. So let's talk, uh, oops, down here, let's talk a bit more about the uh, psychological aspect of it. <clears throat> we already talked, A, uh, one reason your, psych, your, your psyche might be messed up is uh, position sizing, right? Let's just do PS, position sizing, right? So if you have like a $1,000 account, maybe you're putting on, a, I don't know, let's say a one lot trade and your stop loss is 50 pips, you're risking at that point. Um, you know, 50% of your account, 
which is, you know, just, it's not, that's gambling. Um, if you want to gamble, don't, you know, don't get upset that you blew your account. Don't say it's the market's fault. Don't say it's this one guy's fault who told you to buy or sell. It, it's your fault, right? Um, not to be like rude or like mean, but like, you know, trading is serious. Trading's a business. And if you don't respect it, you can't expect to make any money. If you treat it like a game, if you treat it like, uh, <clears throat> you know, get rich quick. Oh, this is so easy. I just need to buy here, sell here. I, no, no, it's not like that. You need to build out a system. Um, and I'm not saying this to like try to discourage anybody either. I'm saying this to, you know, because most people want to do this. Uh, you know, they want to be consistently profitable. They don't want to have a big winner and then quit trading because, you know, they, they risked a lot of money and the next time they might blow it all. That's just gambling. And I know most people don't want that. And so uh, I want to tell you more about the reality of things. You need a system, right? Entry and exit rules, very proper risk management, and honestly, usually a lot more capital than most people are starting out with, which is fine, right? You're starting out. But um, just because you have maybe like a $1,000 account doesn't mean you need to be risking a ton of money uh, because you see someone else making that much money. Their financial situations may be completely different, or maybe they also were just gambling and got lucky, right? So, you know, you want you need to be smarter than the, the most traders because, well, most traders fail. So um, that should be enough proof there for you anyway. But let's talk about some other some other reasons why people might be scared, not just they are over, you know, over leveraging. So another reason some people might, uh, you know, be afraid to hold their winners is because they um, they don't believe in the trade, right? Uh, it might not be a matter of risk management. It might just be, you know, they don't think it can go any further. So like, for example, let's say the chart looks something like this, and then it makes like a double top, right? Maybe they bought right here. And it looks like a double top, you know, price is sort of, uh, it's, it's not wanting to move past this area. And so, you know, they might have a logical reason they might not want to hold it. It doesn't look like it's going to break through and go higher. And that's a, that's a very, you know, realistic and understandable reason for not wanting to hold the trade. Well, you have two options here. Um, and this is what I do. If I really don't think it can go further, it's very simple. I... If, if I don't believe in the trade, if I think either fundamentally this thing probably won't move much more or technically it's really got some strong resistance, then usually I will do what you should do in that situation and take most of the trade off. Notice I did say most of the trade. Um, you know, maybe I take 90% off, um, but still leave 10% running because you never know how far something can go. Maybe it'll come down here, and I've seen this, right? It makes like a double top, triple top, whatever you want to call it. It, it gets rejected, comes down, looks like that's going to be the end of whatever trend it is. And then you, it just, it, you know, either the fundamentals change or that was just technically, it just looked like that. And it keeps going and going and going, right? And so even that 10% can make you some decent gains if you just let it run. And of course, you can move your stop loss to break even. Um, so there's no risk on that small little 10%, um, and there shouldn't be any stress. And so something I want to bring home to you guys also is you don't need to hold every single trade. You don't need to, right? And you don't need to you don't need to only take half off and, and leave it running if you don't believe in it, right? It's all it's all a matter of conditions in trading, and. Um, People just think it's all take it or leave it, and that's not true. You don't always hold your winners. If it doesn't seem like it's it's a good trade to hold, then don't hold it. You know, only trades that look good, that are trending, and look like it's going to continue, I think you should hold, right? So that's one thing you can do is if, uh, you know, it doesn't look really good or some news comes out, whatever it is, take most of the trade off, right? Take your winner and you know, just leave a tiny piece running. If it stops you out of break even, no big deal. You already made profits. You only have a small piece running. 
And if it keeps going, great. Then that's just more profits for you, right? And as it keeps going, you can move your stop loss and and that's it. You know, it, it shouldn't be anything too complicated. And then the last thing that you can do, last thing I want to bring home here is um, you don't need to hold your winner at all, right? You don't need to leave a small piece running every time. If really you don't believe in it, just do, just get out of the trade. Like if you feel not uncomfortable, like scared uncomfortable, if you feel like, like really just don't believe in it, like this is a bad trade, then just get out, you know? Um, like I said, it's all a matter of conditions. Grading. I like I like uh, grading. And, and I, not necessarily like A plus, it's a it's a ninety five, it's a A minus, it's a it's a C plus. Like it doesn't have to be that specific. But just intuition and experience should just tell you what to do, right? When is this when is a good trade? Let me add more a little bit more size. Is this a bad trade? You know, is there no fundamental backing? I will, will reduce my risk. Um, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, just the concept of just using your intuition to make decisions. Like, yes, have a system, have rules, but also leave a little bit open to the current situation. Leave a little bit of, 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 of uh, you know, judgment in there. So, you know, maybe you only take a certain percent off if you are really confident. You could just completely get out if you're not confident. You know, um, only hold your winners if you are, you know, if you believe in the trade for whatever reason it is. You know, not everyone I know watching this trades with fundamentals. Um, <clears throat> but for whatever technical reason, maybe there's a lot of buyers and it's a really strong trend. Then, yeah, you should hold on to it, right? So, um yeah, I hope this video will help some of you guys hold on to your winners longer, and I think it will really help impact um, your bottom line, aka your PL, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up um, and do subscribe um, if you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. I come from a town where most of the people are so close minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody telling me what I should rock. Nobody telling me what I